Hello students, I am Dr. Gajendra Purohit. There is quite an important topic in the differential equations that I have not covered yet. But to understand this topic, it is essential to learn about first order and higher degree differential equations. Because the solution to the differential equation there, whether you do it through solvable for P or solvable for X, or solvable for Y, you need to know these solution before starting this topic. Because let me tell you that whenever we solve the differential equation there, in the first order or higher degree differential equation, then we come across a concept of P discriminant and C discriminant there. From that concept, we get another concept. That is known as the extraneous loci. There is a concept of singular solution. When do we use the concept of cusp loci? We will try to understand this today. So, let's get started. Now let's discuss what exactly is an extraneous loci and how do we determine using the P discriminant and the C discriminant that whether it is a singular solution, a tack locus, a node locus or if it is a cusp locus. So what is the meaning of whatever extraneous loci we have? It means that whatever relation is there between the P discriminant and C discriminant that we have then this extraneous loci represents that particular relation here. However, this is not at all the solution of differential equation. I mean that this is not the solution to a first order higher degree differential equation. Now, the concept within the P discriminant and the C discriminant. What I want to say the relationship between these two decides the solution we get. I will try to explain how can we find based on the relationship between the P and the C discriminant if it is a singular solution, tack locus, node locus or cusp locus. Let's consider that we are getting a P discriminant here that is x square into x minus 1. From here we are getting the discriminant, let me write this as the P discriminant and from here we are getting the C discriminant and we are getting the same value as x square into x minus 1. So students, the term of degree 1 that we get is this. It means what will be x minus 1 is equal to 0 here. It will be the singular solution. Is it clear? Now let's talk about what exactly is the tack locus. So when we discuss about the tack locus and at this point if I say that. Let's suppose we are getting this as the P discriminant and it's C discriminant obtained in this. You can notice there is square term given in this, but there is no square term in this. So it is not necessary that it has to be X square. Let's say instead of this X square, we get X and whole square of X minus 1 and we don't get anything in this just X. It is a square term, but not here. In that case, the X minus 1 square will be substituted equal to 0. So the value of X is equal to 1 what we will get that as here, it will be the tack locus, clear? You need to understand it. Let me take one more example. Let's say we are given this as x square into x minus 1 and let's say we have x minus 1 here. So here is a square term but not here. So the term that is absent and the square term, we will put both of the square term and absent term equal to 0 in this equation. The value we will get, it will be tack locus. If we put x square is equal to 0, then what we will get? It will be tack locus. Now, if we consider the opposite, if this square term is removed from this and we get it here instead, the square term is in its C discriminant, but it is not here. In that case, the same concept will be applied. We put this equal to 0. Then the value of x that is equal to 0 will become node locus because it will be in the C discriminant in square, but the same term is absent in the P discriminant. But if we come across this concept, pay attention, I am trying to explain a very good concept. Suppose if x is given here and we have x cube given here, right? It's not necessary that it should be only x. It could be something else like x minus 1 whole square. For example, if we get x minus 1 and x minus 2 as the p discriminant and if we get x minus 1 to the power of 3 and x minus 2, it means that this could be anything. Whatever is given will decide on that basis. So I will request to not worry and understand it. What is the cusp locus that we have here? If we have a degree of 1 here and we get a cube here, am I clear up to here? The rest we are getting same. If something like this is given, then whatever we are getting, we will put it equal to 0. Then that value will be the cusp locus of this equation, right? You need to understand it. Now I am going to explain it through an example. For example, let's take this question. P square 2 minus 3y. Whole square is equal to 4 into 1 minus y. What are we going to do? We'll rewrite this a bit. P square into... 2 minus 3y whole square minus 4 into 1 minus y. We will find the p discriminant. What is that? It is b square minus 4ac. 
if we were given any term like p square a p square plus b p plus. c is equal to 0, so b square minus 4, a c is equal to 0 is p discriminant. And the value of b, it is 0 and then it will be 16. 1 minus y into 2 minus 3 y. Whole square is equal to 0. This is the whole square of 3 y, right? We will simplify this and we will get 1 minus y and whole square of 2 minus 3 y is equal to 0. What will we get this as? It will be the p discriminant. Now, we will move to the next step. We will find its c discriminant. And to find it, we will have to solve it. We have to see if it's solvable for p or solvable for x or if it's solvable for y. Now, this is solvable for p, right? So, what will we do? We will solve this. I will write this here. If we get this differential equation as p square is equal to, I'll take this term to other side in division. Then it will become 4 into 1 minus y upon this will be 2 minus 3y whole square. We will take its square root. And we know that p means dy by dx. This will be 2. The square root of 1 minus y by this will be 2 and minus it will be 3y. Now if we will solve it, then we will get this as 2 minus 3y divided by. The square root of 1 minus y is equal to it will be 2 dx. So here we have dy. Now what will we do? We will integrate this and add the constant c here. So if we separate this, so this will give us 2 here. And at this point, if you want, you can add 1 to this. I think it would be better to add 1 and then subtract 1. Hence what I will do, I will add 1 to this and then subtract 1 here. This will become 3 minus 3y. So this 3 will be taken common and this will be 1 minus y. And minus 1 upon square root of 1 minus y into dy is equal to 2x plus c. We will divide this separately. So this will become 3 within bracket square root of 1 minus y minus. This will become 1 minus y raised to the power minus 1 by 2 into dy is equal to 2x plus c. Now integrate it. This will be 3 multiplied by 1 minus y to the power 3 by 2. Upon 3 by 2, this will be minus 1 minus y to the power 1 by 2 upon 1 by 2 is equal to this will be 2x plus c, right? We will get this value. 3 will get cancelled from 3. You can take the 2 to the other side or you can inverse it. Ultimately, we will be solving this expression. Now, what is the value that we will get from here? 3 will cancel with this 3. And 2 can be divided on the other side. It will be better. Then it will be 1 minus y to the power 3 by 2. And 1 minus y raised to the power 1 by 2. This will be x plus c by 2. So I'll take this as c, right? Because we will divide with 2. So x and c by 2 will become x and c. There is a small correction. When we integrate this, then we will put minus sign of y. Please correct. This will become minus and this will become plus. This will become minus and plus here. So what will we do? 1 minus y to the power of 1 by 2 will be taken common. We will be left with minus 1 plus y. And then this will become plus 1, right? Is equal to x plus c. So the value will become y into 1 minus y to the power. 1 by 2 equals x plus c. Square both sides, it will be better. If you do whole square, it will be y square. 1 minus y is equal to x plus c whole square will be x square. Plus 2x c plus c square. We will find the c discriminant. So, c square plus 2x, c plus x square minus y square, 1 minus y is equal to 0. Now, we find the c discriminant. The c discriminant is the same, b square minus 4ac, right? We will get 4x square minus 4ac. So, this will be. Okay, first pay attention here. I'll try to explain this thing a bit. Now, students, suppose that if we are given any equation of this type as pc square plus qc plus r, we know that q square minus 4 pr equals to 0. It's the same as b square minus 4 ac. It is p discriminant. It is quadratic in c. Now, if we notice here, this term is b and this is c and value of this a is 1, right? Now, what we will get if we simplify it? We will get 4 into x square minus y square into 1 minus y equals 0. Then this 4 will get cancelled. Now, we will get this as x square minus x square plus y square. 1 minus y is equal to 0, x square will cancel out. The c discriminant we get is 1 minus y is equal to 0. Look at these two. These values are the p discriminant. This is the c discriminant. And we are getting 1 minus y term common here. Now pay attention, we need to understand what we will get. First, we will discuss 1 minus y which is common. So this 1 minus y equals 0 will be the singular solution. Tell me what will it be students? It will be singular solution. Now you can notice the p discriminant has a term of degree 2. It is 2 minus 3y. But it's not here. If you will see, it is not here. 
Now what this will become? This will become the tack locus. We will put 2 minus 3y is equal to 0. This means that if we square it, we will get this. Hence what we will get? What will be 3y is equal to 2? It will be our tack locus. This will be our tack cusp. You can write tack loci. Now let's talk about this. You can see that we have a term of degree 2 in this. But it is not here. Therefore, it will become node locus. It means we will put y square is equal to 0. It will be same y is equal to 0. And what will be y is equal to 0? You need to pay attention. It will become the node locus or node loci, right? In this way, we can easily understand it. Now, let's try to understand next question. We have this question given and you're being asked. To examine the extraneous loci, we have this question here. We will solve it and we'll first calculate the P discriminant. So, we will write this differential equation as x to the power 4 p square minus p x minus y equals 0. We will put this equal to 0. Then what will be p discriminant? We can see it is b square, that is x square minus 4. And a into c, which will be x to the power 4 y. This minus minus will become plus. We will take x square common. Then we will get 1 plus 4 x square y equals 0. This will be p discriminant. Now we will find out the c discriminant. And for that, we will check if this is solvable for x or for y. This is solvable for y because it is equal to y on this side. Now what we will do, if we will check, it will become y is equal to, it will be x power 4. p square minus px. Now differentiate it with respect to x. So dy by dx. Now we will differentiate it, we will use u into v. This will be for x cube p square. Now leave this x to the power 4. So it will be 2p dp by dx. Now we will differentiate it and it will become minus p and it will be minus x dp by dx. Now what we will put for dy by dx? We will put p. Hence I will substitute p and is equal to it will be. 4x cube p square we will take dp by dx common here. Now I will take this minus p and we will take common. So I will take x dp by dx common here. So students what will we get from here? We will get this as 2x cube it will become p and minus 1. So, students, we will get this term. If we talk about it, we'll take it here. Hence, students, here we will get 2p and then minus we will get this term as 4x cube p square. Take it over there. So, it becomes minus x. dp by dx, it will be 2x cube multiplied by p minus 1, which is equal to 0. Now, we will take it common. We also see that 2p is common. So, if you check, we can take out minus 2p common as well. I think it will be better so, we will get 2x cube p minus 1 and it will be minus x. dp by dx minus this is same 2x cube p minus 1 equals 0. This is what we get. If you don't have any idea about solvable for p, x or y, you can watch the video through i tab to understand these concept. I have uploaded some good videos. Now, take minus common and now this will become 2p and plus it will be x. dp by dx, it will become equal to 0. Either we put this to 0 or this to 0, putting this will give p is equal to 1 by 2 x, which is not helpful. So, we will put this equal to 0 here, right? When we substitute this equal to 0, we will have 2 p plus x dp by dx is equal to 0, right? We will take this to other side. After that, we will get dp upon p as it is, but we will get is equal to minus 2 dx upon x, right? When you will solve like dx upon x, then we will get this value. And now I will directly integrate this. So we will get this as log p is equal to, this will be minus 2 log x plus, I'll take log c, right? So p is equal to, this will be c upon x square. Thus we will get this value. Now where we will substitute this value of p, we will put it here. When we will put it, so y is equal to, sorry, y plus, we will get c upon x square into x. Here we will put so, x to the power 4c square upon x to the power 4, x power 4 will cancel out. This will be c square and I will cancel x here. So, this will come as minus c by x minus y is equal to 0. Take these both terms to other side, it is quadratic in c. Again, the same b square minus 4ac. So, we will get it c discriminant, right? Okay, so the c discriminant will be b square, that is 1 minus 1 by x whole square and minus 4 and ac. a is 1, value of c is this. So, this is minus y and this is 1 is equal to, it will be 0. This will become 1 upon x square plus 4y is equal to 0. Cross multiply this, we will get 1 plus 4y x square is equal to 0 as c discriminant. This is its p discriminant. 
Now look, this term is common and this 1 plus 4x square y is equal to 0. What will we get this as here? We will get singular solution. If you are asked what is its singular solution, it will be this. Now if this is a term of degree 2 given here, but it is not given here. Whenever we get this, it will be tac locus. What we will do? This x square is equal to 0. This is a term of degree 2, but not this term. What will we get? This x is equal to 0 as. Pay attention. It will become the tac loci. And this is how we can solve this given question. Clear? Now this question is for comment box. How much time did you take to solve it? Please let me know. If you want to know the first order, higher degree differential equation. How do we solve the question here? And what concept is involved? If you want to watch how to solve through solvable for x or y, you will find all the videos here. If you are preparing for the CSIR net IIT jam and want to practice questions, you can check it out here. You can subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much.